box, what has been your biggest aha moment so far in the conference? What's been the thing that really just sparked something in you? While you're doing that, I am, I take great privilege in welcoming Roche Buckle with us today um, for this workshop. Welcome to the Creative Arts Conference 2022, Roche. Thank you so much, Shadil. I'm excited to be back again after we hear last year to you. Awesome. Okay, so I'll maybe tell you a little bit about Roche. She is a well-known and loved play director an ex-drama teacher at Rustenburg Girls Junior, and is currently the head of culture at Parklands College in the pre pre preparatory faculty. Today, Roche is gonna to talk to us about the great mad idea. How to use an idea and incorporate music, art, and drama with the potential of turning the idea into a project-based learning experience. And with that, I'm gonna hand straight over to you, Roche. Thank you so much, Adil. If you wouldn't mind just um, sharing my for me that'll be amazing <clears throat> so yes so some of you asked about what a mad idea is and a mad idea is basically incorporating music art and drama into one idea um, and I've done it often and it's very exciting for me and for my teachers that I work with and I'm going to give you hopefully inspire you uh, to do that too so Incorporating the ideas, oh, there we go, that's our first one. And if we go to our slide two, you'll see there's me. Um, and just that I'm also, I'm a theater addict and a Google innovator and Google trainer as well. So I've been through that. And what was really exciting for me was to attend uh, the Google Innovator course in New York, where I shared ideas about incorporating drama across the curriculum, um, which was amazing. And to just be inspired by so many like-minded teachers was something that I will cherish forever. But let's get back to our mad idea and how to incorporate music, art and drama into, into one, one big project. All right, so if we go to our third slide, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to inspire you. So I'm very lucky to work at a school where we're a one-to-one -one school, so every learner has got a device. But just like Lindsay said, when they've got a device and they have access to uh, the internet, then we need to give them something extra because they can Google and find everything. So we need to inspire them and push them a little bit further. I'm also very lucky in that I'm the drama teacher and I have a team of people working with me. So I have art teachers and I have music teachers as well. But I know that for many of you, you have to do it all. And some of you might not be a specialist, a music teacher or a specialist, a drama teacher or art teacher at all. And you're sort of clawing your way through trying to figure out how to cover um, the, the CAPS curriculum and get it all done and still be inspiring to the learners. So we're going to try and do that today. And what's so wonderful about creating project based learning experiences for our learners using our creative art subjects is that there is that creative ability that you don't see coming through in other subjects and uh, the learners end up taking ownership of their work and creating something completely different and amazing and just like Vaughan said in his talk um, the learners will surprise you and learners that other teachers think are lackadaisical and not interested in school will do the most amazing work and so that is what we're wanting to do. Um, so my culture department has embarked on many, many MAD projects. We've looked at our uh, CAPS requirements and we've realized that if we combine projects, we can cover so many of the um, the assessments that are needed and get so many marks from it because the planning process covers vital skills. So, uh, for example, if you are drawing in your visual diary, you, you're covering a line drawing and sketching, uh, planning your dialogue and rehearsing your dialogue in drama, you can cover that. And of course, planning music sequences. And if we give these learners guidelines, but the freedom to experiment artistically, um, then they create this wonderful work. And because they are doing the same project in three subjects. They can be working on this project throughout the week and they can get inspiration from all of the teachers that are working with this project. And then um, they, their interpretation will just be incredible. So if we then take a project idea and we add in a non-Googleable real world driving question, 
then we turn that into a project-based learning experience because then the learners are working towards finding an answer to this question and it's their interpretation of the answer which is the final product which turns it into a project-based learning experience so let's have a look at how we can do that now don't be nervous this is something that you can do i promise and what you need to do if we move on to um, slide number four please daniel is that you need to work and look at your strength. So as a drama teacher, my immediate go-to is to go to a poem or to go to a script and to see how I can use that as a project. And that, that's great because that's your comfort zone. And once you take something that you're comfortable using, you can then expand. But I know that there are many music teachers on this, on this call. And so I think let's, let's have a look at some music. So for example, if you find a piece of music um, any instrumental music, maybe you're working on rhythms or patterns, as we saw in the curriculum, within your music lesson, then the learners can listen to that music and they can imitate the rhythm or look at the pattern and work out that pattern using their hands or shakers or uh, my learners can use apps because they have it available to them. Then you take that same music and you add in a drama element and you say, right, if, you're, if you were watching something on TV and this music was playing in the background, what is the action that you would be seeing happening on the screen? And now I don't just mean, oh, they're dancing or they're playing the guitar or whatever it is. What are they doing? Are they walking slowly? Yes. Why are they walking slowly? Well, because they're actually creeping down the passage to take the last piece of chocolate cake out of the fridge or they're walking slowly because their shoulders are drooped and they're feeling sad. So we're bringing in a drama element into the music. Then maybe depending on the age group, we look at this and we think, right, now, how are we going to bring in some art? Well, we're we gonna make a movie from this or we're we gonna make a poster from this. So let's design the outfit that the character is wearing or let's design the logo of the movie. And so that is how we then put all three elements together from one piece of music. And we could turn it into a project that ends up potentially being a project-based learning experience. So what I'm gonna do now is in the next slide, if you turn to slide number five, I've got um, some music and there's some fabulous royalty-free music that you can get from Pixabay. So take that link and use it, pixabay.com forward slash music. And we're going to play this music and I want you just play 30 seconds of it for us, Daniel. And I want you to listen to it and then think about the action. What is happening if you were watching something on TV and this music was playing? What is the action that would be happening? I'm just going to mute myself quickly. And if you play 30 seconds of it um, then we, and pop in the chat what you think is happening. Okay, go for it, Daniel. All right, brilliant. Ah, I love that. Yes, we had silence, so there could have been a library, marvellous. Um, but then we've got our music. So I like these ideas, road trip. I like how we've combined road trip, driving along a coastal road in a convertible. Yeah, now that gives us something. So what about the characters? Dancing, what kind of dancing, Nelda? Where are they? What are they doing? Um, so maybe they're driving along a coastal road in a convertible with their surfboards going on holiday. So you see how we're creating this, this story, they're going on a road trip, then they're ending up at a place. Um, and so we can create a scene from that, a drama scene from it, where they can be um, creating the script that goes with it. And then we have our characters and we think about, right, so what is this character going to say to the other character? Maybe the character who's holding onto the surfboard is saying something to the person who's driving, or maybe somebody in the back is wanting to stop because they, they need the loo or, or something like that. So we're building on this um, dialogue and we're creating a script from it. A character is chewing gum. Yes, I love that. I can just see that. Okay, so then 
you take that idea and you think now we need to add in our art element. So what are we going to do? Ah, I know. Let us design the clothes because now I've got lively in 60s. Nelda said 60s. So maybe we design the outfits that these um, characters are going to wear. So in our art room, we then find maybe recycled things and we create the outfits. Then we've got our music, we've got our script and we've got our drama acting and we've got our art all together. And there we've made a mad idea from one piece of music, you see? And we did it in 30 seconds. How easy is that? Okay, so that's what I mean by using a mad idea. Okay, so let's go to slide number six, um, please, Daniel. So the idea, once we start as teachers, we yes, you can design the convertible and surfboards as well. Yes, 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 you can. You can absolutely, absolutely. You see these ideas just spring. Um, as teachers, we automatically, when we start something new, say, right, we're going to do a scene or we're going to design a poster or we're all going to present. And we all we give them this idea so that all the children are ending up with the same final product. Now, Although that is great because we're guiding them as to what we want them to create, it's not really a project-based learning experience for them. As teachers, we need to give them the tools to enjoy that experience. So in our art, we are teaching them how to do line drawing or sketching. In our music, we're teaching them about rhythm and patterns. In drama, we teach them about presentation skills. And then to let our project be turned into a project-based learning experience, we need to say to them, right, you know all of those ideas. You've got all of those tools. This is the question that we're asking. How are you going to present your final product? What is it going to be your best way of doing it? And some children might present their final product as a scene. Some children might present it as a piece of music. And some people might present it as an artwork that they create. And that's how we create the variation by the variation from taking something from a project into a project-based learning experience. Are you understanding me? You know, because we can just combine subjects together and they there it's a combined project. But PBL means that final student voice and student choice. Okay. All right. So I want to just show you on the next slide, there's a video as to how we started at our school. So um, when we press play, you'll hear, I'm talking about how we did this project. Now, in this video, this is just a music, art, and drama project. And we have taken this idea. This was from, I think, 2016, 2017. And we have pushed it and turned it into more of a project-based learning experience because we've given them non-Googleable questions to answer at the end, and they've presented it differently. So if you just have a look at this one, um, it just gives you an idea of, of what we did. So I'll just mute myself, and then you can press play, Daniel, and hopefully we won't be in a library. Creative collaboration between subjects is interesting for learners and educators, especially when ensuring that vital elements of the curriculum are covered. The creation of 2D and 3D objects and using clay to sculpt are essential elements of art. Composition and African music is part of the music syllabus, and using scripts, creating dialogue, interaction between characters and voice modulation form the basis of the drama syllabus. We created a Google Classroom for each class where we shared the project brief and gave an outline of the expectations for each aspect of the project. This included the rubric. The planning process was very important and the learners used their visual diaries to draw the outline of their sculpture. Once planned, each learner received clay to create their sculpture. They were very diligent in the manner that they created the sculptures and used toothpicks, flat lollipop sticks, and earbuds to create texture. The results are quite amazing. Animals, masks, and figurines filled the kiln to capacity. Many apps, including Poplet and Docs, were used in the drama room to create the character profile and plan the setting and script. Interesting openings were encouraged. In music, the learners experimented with various rhythms and techniques to create the perfect sound. We should do like funny music for when it actually happens. Yeah, yeah. So when you 
thinking about it, he was like, oh yeah, this is so cool. The noise of excited learners planning and preparing filled our cultural quad and led the creative process. All right, so that was a project that we did a while ago. And um, the, the creative process is scary for so many of the children because some of them like to have everything black and white. Um, so if you move on to slide number eight for us, please. And they, they don't, um, they, they're afraid to experiment. But once they get into that experimentation, then the, it's just endless what they, can, what they can create. And for you as well as a teacher, you can also just become more confident with experimenting. Um, and we were very surprised with some of the products that were presented to us at the end because the learners took ownership of their product and what they wanted to do. Um, I think, Megan, you, see, you said the video link was a bit, um, you couldn't hear. I'm sure if they can share the slides afterwards and you can have everything. Um, Oh, so Ghazani, what we did was the process, we assessed as we went along. So each of us taught all what we needed to teach. We taught, we teach them how to present um, depending on which part of the syllabus we were working on. So our art teacher would teach them um, throughout the year how to do line drawing, how to work with the clay, how to make 2D, 3D sculptures, that sort of thing. The music teacher would be teaching them rhythms and patterns. And then we'd be working towards this project where we'd say, you've learned all of this along the way. Now, here we go. We've got this idea and we want you to use. So for example, in our we had a folk tales project where we said, how would you dis, um, want to preserve a folk tale for the future? That was our project, our, our non googleable question that we had because we thought the, the art of folk tales is dying and we want you to preserve it. And so they could then decide how to present it, whether they wanted to make a clay sculpture or do something in watercolors or um, act out a story or just do it with music. And so that's how we assessed it along the way. And then we had the final product where they decided what their um, product would be, like how they would present it. And that would be their way of preserving the folktale. And that project in particular is on Lindsay's Purple ZA stories. So if you follow her link that she shared in her previous thing, you can find it there. Um, so there we go. Um, it's 12 o'clock. I just want to show you uh, just one more video. This one uh, really surprised us um, of how I've got a few more videos in my in my um, slide deck that you can look through. But um, we uh, so there were, we had the clay one that you've seen. And I think if you play for us slide number 10, then that's got a watercolor one and just play, um, I think, just sort of. Yeah, 30 seconds of that so we can still have time. All right, let's leave the videos. Um, you can have a look. I think share the share the uh, link to the slides, and then you can have a look at those other videos and see what we did. Um, but the main thing is that when you give the learners the opportunity to experiment with what they've learned in answering a question, then they go on a journey of discovery. And th that's what you want because you're learning and discovering as well. And then they, um, they, they present it in a way that you would never have thought possible. Uh, and they learn from it then and they remember it. And when you reflect on it, you can think about how you can improve each year and make that project even better because that's what we've done is if we've improved each year with what we've done um, and the important thing to remember though is that you need to chat you need to find a colleague if you are working on your own though you need to find that colleague to chat to and just collaborate because when you chat and share ideas then the mad idea becomes even bigger and once you have become comfortable with using your creative art subjects in a project-based learning experience, you can then take that further. I saw somebody put in the chat in Vaughan session about English. Yes, you can get an English writing mark from writing your script, or you can put in, you can get um, an oral mark from the presentation as, as well. So all of those can be included um, too. So just, just think about it, think about collaboration, but try it on your own first. <laughs> and become comfortable with it because it is a scary thing but once you start it will be fine okay
Dion, you want the link to my slide deck. Um, can you share it, Daniel? Or would you like me to do it? Yes, oh, Daniel is busy sharing the link now. Thank you. Marguerite, you can decide how long this project needs to take. I know that um, sometimes um, it becomes daunting to do it. And depending on how much time you have, with your classes. So you might want to do a project over a whole term. Um, you might want to do a project over, over two weeks, but it all depends on the time. So for us, because we have three teachers working together, it ends up being two hours a week that the children have to work on this project. Um, and it makes it, it makes it easier for them to get through all the work that they need to do. But because we collaborate, um, they might do some of their artwork in drama or they might do some of their music in art because we're all working on it together as well. So once you've launched this idea and launched this um, project, then working together makes it easier for the children as well. And also they can see that all of the teachers are invested in it and they can see that the teachers want them to succeed. And, and that's what you want as well, because then they work even harder. Is there anything else? I can answer or um, Rache, thank you so much. The thing that I'd like to ask about in, the, uh, in your presentation, you spoke about the difference between just a big project and a real project based learning experience. And, and yes. also another thing that you're drawing on is just the key with the key to it all is the real collaboration between teachers. And so how do you get the buy in? of teachers to really go for a, pro a true project-based learning experience, um, if this is something that's perhaps a new concept? Well, the way we started was we sat down with a cup of tea and we said, right, let's, let's do this, let's do this together. And so th that first one that you looked at, the art teacher said, well, I need to make 3D sculptures and I've got some clay and I need to do clay. I said, right, I need to do folk tales. Okay, fine, fabulous. And the, the music teacher said, I have to do African music, great. So we can put this all together and we can create a, and because we have got um, access to devices, we could create videos where the the animals became the telling the folk tales with the music in the background, but it was just chatting, talking and working together. Um, and I think that if you have one person who is enthusiastic about it, um, and shows the potential to other teachers and shows that actually you're going to lessen your workload if we work together, then it's, it's, it all comes together in the end. And from one year to the next, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, we even had one year, our Isikosa teacher involved in our project as well, um, because she was doing folk tales too. And so we had some that were translated, which I, I think is amazing. So you can you can do that too. Wonderful. Um, I'm also just uh, popping onto the Q and A, and I see Tracy's said that I see you are using devices. Any apps you re recommend? Oh, you see, we have got Apple devices, so it depends on what you want to use. So for us, when we're doing final presentations, we like to use iMovie and we incorporate GarageBand for our sound. Um, we use voice memos to record voice and then pop in. Uh, as far as um, collaboration on writing, I really love the Google Workspace for Education tools, um, being a Google innovator and trainer. And uh, if you have docs, a shared doc, everyone can work on a script together, which is really amazing. And you can see the changes in real time. Um, and that's fantastic. So even if somebody is not at school, the project can continue, which, which I really love. And because we share it all on Google Classroom, teachers have got access to it as well and can guide the children along the way. Wonderful. What I really loved about the students being able to choose the form in which the final product takes is just the, the ownership that a student can take in that regard. I think it's just absolutely lovely. And that, and that was the most incredible thing for us, because sometimes children actually don't want to act out something because they're shy and they prefer to express themselves through a piece of art. And that's absolutely fine because we've given them the tools to be able to do that. And we've assessed drama because we've done a little bit along the way when we've done a bit of presentation and we've practiced a little bit. But that final product is their interpretation. Um, and and that, that's amazing for me to see. And I think that's also just so key in the arts. That's really, you know, one of the reasons 
that we do this is to be to give children a voice to uh, express their identity in whichever way, shape, or form that might take. So it's really wonderful. Absolutely, and you know, um, we do a lot of group work as well. So within the group. Um, there might be children who would prefer to do the art or they would prefer to do the the voice or the, the acting of it. And so they can collaborate together and then everybody has a part to play and each part is important to the final product as well, which is, is great for the learners because then they keep each other accountable. And then you get wow. a good product. Wonderful. I'm just I'm looking at... Um, I'm, I'm, Hassania, I think that's how you say your name. Her takeaway is that teachers should start talking, especially in high schools, to bring this to life and make learning curious and fun. I think that just drives right at the point. Absolutely, absolutely. The more you chat, the more you see that our subjects do overlap and that working together can make life so much more interesting and more fun for us and the children. Wonderful. Well, Roche, we're fast heading towards the end of our time uh, together. I want to thank you for this really insightful workshop. Thank you for giving us ideas that really pulled us in and for giving us tangible ways to incorporate mad ideas into um, project-based learning. Um, I'd like to, with that, with ending of the session, thank you to everybody who's taken the time to attend. Thank you for your engagement. It's been incredibly valuable. Um, this chat session will carry on. So if you want to carry on chatting, please do so in this, in this session. Please continue sharing ideas. Please continue inspiring each other. Um, after this, we're going to take a 10 minute break and then we're going to go straight into another round of workshops. We've got a, a workshop on Cami. We've got a workshop on overcoming the challenges of a found, in foundation phase art. And then we are exploring indigenous African dance. So take a 10 minute break and we will see you back here uh, after your coffee. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Roche. And you can just follow Buckle Drama, Instagram and Twitter and Buckle Drama at Gmail. It's easy. Buckle Drama. You can find me. <laughs> <laughs>